Ik promise hem die ding. En ze take die dollar. En nou, nou, ze hier wat ik geef. Ze zeggen, mijn moeder go here. En dit en dat. Ik vind wat ik like about him is um, line excuses. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah, but Moses. Listen to Moses, I'm a old man. You never seen that. Moses, I'm a old man too. Yeah. For the pillow, the pillow doesn't fit in our sack. You want to get too tight? Yeah. yeah. Go. <laughs> Say, you're worse than a dog, Teresa. This morning you no. take me dollar. I know you're playing smart. Never no. me again, Teresa. Line excuses on another one. That's yeah, the one no, economy. That's yeah, the economy. but this one is Teresa. Yeah, I remember that one. But line excuses are a good classic on the economy and the price but, are living. But um, boy, remember that to go alone in these days. So I just go on YouTube and pick up them old calypso. Go into line excuses and then. And then I just go in YouTube and pick up some of these old mm. um, Indian. Um, Songs is in general, mine and all kind of thing. It's really it's amazing. She will have everybody, everybody music. Mm -hmm. Everybody. So that, um. So how does that affect your writing? It does influence my writing because my writing, really, most of my writing are nostalgia. My, especially for the time when I was growing up and all that. And, um,. It has so much uh, uh, material there for me. That is why I tell you I don't need to listen to the birds and the chirp and the sea waves crash to get inspiration. Inspiration and my head, My head full of that. <laughs> oh, you see when you're a big boy, what? Yeah. <laughs> and Raymond, where do you get your inspiration from? Anything. Everything. You know what, what, when I get most of my inspiration? When I'm bathing in the bathroom, bathroom you surprise me. So I'll, I'll regret that I have a pen in my bathroom. <laughs> I don't know why, when I go to the water, things will just... Maybe wash away the clown. <laughs> the clown. I get plenty of inspiration in the bathroom. Okay, this here is an extract from Paloma's story. But um, Gusha was asking me before you wanted me to say a bit about myself. And um, Professor Eugenia, when I did the recent Copper Foundation writing course, I asked him the same question. He told me that um, if you want to know about me, read my work. So before I get to the other question, you might want to ask me, I'd like to read the extract of my work. I could probably put it that you you and your viewers will have an idea about me. So here it goes. The rain, had, the rain had been falling in Sesame for days, but the farmers welcomed it, for it filled the lagoon that only last week were parched, dried, and cracked. Everyone was worried about, was worried that the beers, that is the rice seedlings, as they were called, would become overgrown and unsuitable for replanting. With the rains, the village became a beehive of activity as the lands were cleared and divided into polars, that is square plots divided by small banks to keep the water in or let it out as required. The grass vines from the dry watermelon and cucumber crops of the last season were pulled together in a heap at the center of the cola in a buka, which would leave, which would later serve as a fertilizer mound where well, Karaili same or even a pumpkin vine would thrive. It was easier to pull the debris through the water and for the younger folks, clearing the fields became more of a game than a toy. Although it was in early June, they had been warning about hurricanes passing near Trinidad and bringing high winds, rains and thunderstorms. But since these predictions rarely came into being, especially in the southern country areas, the villagers went about their work as usual. Even then, the God is a trini frame of mind prevailed. The day began to break in the rain and the sky being cloudy. All took the opportunity to advance their work in the lagoon. Paro, despite being seven months pregnant, insisted that she help. After all, she wasn't due for two months. And to besides, she and her husband were living at her father's house for the last six months. 
Since he lost his job at the village hardware because of drink, he hadn't found another one, thus being unable to pay his rent. He was a lazy man who felt he was too cultivated for manual work, let alone working in the right fields. Every morning, he would dress up saying that he was going to work. He was going to look for work and return in the evening drunk. He wanted an easy end, such as driving out from rich family or a doctor or contractor, perhaps, where he could dress up in white shirt and tie and pretend that he was working in an office. The rain had started drizzling as Paro pulled her to pile towards the book cup. Stalks of grass trailing behind like a tail when she felt a sharp tingling on her right thumb. She glanced at a small snake about four inches long and as thin as a worm, wriggling away in the water and then disappeared. And then the sky opened. The rain came down in torrents and work was abandoned for the day as a sought shelter at the family's home in Puzzle Island. Puzzle Island was a hill so named as it became completely surrounded by water whenever there was heavy rainfall, making access to the houses near impossible. What baffled the residents was that by the next day the waters would recede just as quickly. On this day the rains came down and the floods came up. And by the time Paro noticed her swollen hand and remembered the little snake, the rising water would prevent her from being taken to the hospital. There was no pain, and when that girl sat who gyrated her hand, and her mother rubbed it with a mixture of beer and saffron, she felt well enough to go to bed. About 11 that night, the neighbor pains came. There was no way Paro could get to the hospital, and the chamine, an old lady who practiced midwifery and lived on the hill, was summoned. The baby came at midnight. It was a girl. And when the chamine was wiping her teeth, she noticed a small faint image like a varicose vein on her thigh. Frightened, she turned the baby over to examine her back. There on her spine was the more pronounced and dis more pronounced and distinct was a dark image of a tiny snake. Sapping, she screamed as she let the baby fall to the open floor. Yeah, stop here. <laughs> Sometimes I tend to write about just ordinary things. And um, well, I, I do really write poetry. I think that my strong point, my strength is in writing short stories. However, I was, as a, I was on a, a retreat where we had a poetry component and I was challenged to do something. And, um, sit down there looking at the sea up in um, San Suzuki there. I was, wasn't getting the inspiration that my other colleagues were getting. So I sit down and I think about why I am here. And um, my friend Randy, he sit down there and looking at the sea. I see this log floated. <laughs> and he started to write. So now I started to think of, well, we have this assignment to write poetry. Mm -hmm. And I don't normally write poetry. Right. So you know, I started to think about well, what I could write about. And I wrote about my, how I came to come to this particular um, retreat. Right. Uh, and it worked for me because uh, my mind was on a string, right? I spoke more, so I started to talk about my daughter. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm getting older, mm -hmm. so she got concerned about um, daddy, you're going here for these few days, right. you'll be all right. Yes. Yes. And then my wife would ask me, if you have your medication, and mm -hmm. if you're well enough to drive so far, things like mm -hmm. that. And so I decided, okay, I'll write about that. Right. And the strange thing happened. When they selected six poems to publish in the art, they take that. So I don't know, sometimes I, I don't know, I do 
Ano yung nagaya ng mga... A deep thinker. Ay, take the right boat. What I would say is, no ordinary things that happened to me or that has happened to me. This is what I came up with. My daughter, she wants to know, are you going to the writer's retreat? I will pay, my daughter say, Daddy, this is my treat. Are you well enough to drive so far, or shall I take you there? Listen to me, listen, Papa, you're getting older. And she calls twice a day to ask me how I am. I will leave the phone in the room today. She's becoming a bloody nuisance. Anna, she packs my suitcase with everything I need. Shavers, perfumes, creams, toothpaste. Take a dress shirt for when you would read. Pencils, space, pencils, pens, notebooks, flash drives, and take your Kindle too. Favorite movies in your laptop bag, I chose them just for you. My wife, she says, you use my van, for your car is getting old. And I don't want you shutting down. And take a sweater, it might be cold. The journey is long, so carry some tea. You might feel hungry on the way. Two pieces of roti for you and Randy, and have him drive today. And call me when you do, you do get there, and take your medication. I know they love me, I know they care, but it's too much damn attention. No, <laughs> he would put me on his back. Yes, yeah, well, he would right. Drive. He would take us to the beach for drive, right. he would try, take us for drive, to right. look at life for Diwali and all. I grew up and I wasn't much of a hunger myself. But I think I came out, although I didn't experience that from him. You know, how many people is not a problem. And, but before he died, he said to me, he said, you know, he grew up in an era where how many people was not a problem. It wasn't here. So I felt that, you know, so my son, he migrated to England right. when he was just about 17, 18. Nineteen ninety. When I went to England, I suppose it was a culture. And I felt a bit awkward. And, and from then on, I, I think that you know, after a while, I got accustomed to it. And, and uh, I suppose the rest is on the top. Yes. My daughter, she doesn't, she's not want to display. I'm gonna physical Affection. But I know she will be here. So she, she has a corporate lawyer and she right. is a program director in okay. you know, she made, she made right, right. the academy in the career otherwise. But she's the one who would want to know if I can drive. Shall I get you a car? Shall I can I drive? Is that a funny thing because for both us live. Um, I was scheduled to read at the library. Mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, for some reason, I was feeling too up the drive. Yeah. She was going to work that day right. at, um, at the lock. Yeah. <laughs> she said, yeah. 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 don't go to the club tonight. I will send her to the drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I have a first. Was it Uber? Yeah. The first <laughs> Uber experience. But I like it. The driver called me. So I said, you said, oh, you know, just take good care of already. So in that way, sometimes that I'm um, you know, my children kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, this one is called Uncle Shabbos. My uncle died last week. He was 83. Lived longer than all the men in the same family. He had a dog named Nemo, not named after the clownfish of the Disney movie he told me, but after the captain in the book, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. He was a great reader of books, strange for a man of his time. Occupation, truck driver by day. I am sure he lived a thousand lives 
two pages every day. Yesterday, four sons and a nephew performed rituals to assist his soul in the afterlife journey. You might have read about it in Dante's The Divine Comedy, or perhaps in the Garud Pura of Hindu religious text, which detailed similar hardships the soul meets on its trek. For as he became elderly, he studied. Hindu philosophy. The priest explained to us as we sat with Ed Shaven the meaning of the gifts given umbrella, the shade from the heat, lamp, the light the way, slippers to protect the feet, bed to rest the weary soul, offerings of food into the sacred fire to appease palms of hunger. As he recited the sacred mantras, my man began to drift irreverently. Sugars would not want these things to take on this journey. He would like to take a big book on this long journey, perhaps to kill a mockingbird by the great Apple or irrelevant boys from Brazil or Rosemary's baby. He would not want to forget his collection of readers digest or the detective stories magazines he seemed to love the best. Novels of Perry Mason and Mickey Spillin too. The spy who came in from the coal and maybe a classic or two. The complete works of William Shakespeare and Robert Williams poems too. Agatha Christie, Ruth Rendell. He would take them with him even going to hell. I am not for my evening. Final rites are being said. I try to be reverential, pay respects for the dead. So go, sugars, be on your way. In my heart, you will live, live on. The reader lives a thousand lives. The reader, only one. Well, you have left me a legacy, love for the written world, the stories that is within me. I must share with you. I'm not supposed to have it. Right. Uh, these are the things that have me certainly part of literature, right. reading, right. and right. eventually writing. Mm -hmm. Have you been saying that a guy of his time driving a truck would be reading all these novels and people talk about Dante and yeah. Milton and all that. And I think it probably what it shows to that um, the level of education at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it must have only gone to primary school. Right. It was much more better than yeah. what we have now.